I'm good. Everything good back there? Yep. Awesome. All right. Well, we're recording now. So we, we are. We got to banter a little bit. This will be the black and white portion before we actually do the official do recording the do. or whatever. Do I actually do. realized I need to pull up the script because I don't have the That's intro. Right. I don't have the intro memorized. It's so terrible. You'd think 100, 100 things in. So You don't uh, have it memorized? Uh, I really don't. Bit. I bet you could do Not even better dumb. than you think. I can't memorize anything. Do the do. That makes me think of like, do you have a, is Baja Blast like your, your go-to Taco Bell drink? I don't have a go-to Taco Bell anything. That's a crime. True, unfortunately. We need well, to fix you that. Know, Rachel's got some go-to I, I think Taco I heard that Taco Bell is like, the, the crunch wrap is like under some litigation because it doesn't look like the picture. Have y'all heard that? Yeah. I mean, isn't that like every I mean, fast it's still food delicious. item? No, 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 Brian, not the filet fish <laughs> The filet of fish. Yeah, it's, it's just as disappointing as I was just talking about this looks, to somebody. Yeah. No, it's beautiful. <laughs> I put, I, I take the filet of fish bun every time I get one and I put it on my face. On your face? Doesn't yeah. it have like butter on it? No, like, it's 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 smooth it's dry bun. and fluffy and beautiful. All right, that's And weird. it looks just like the picture. It really does. <laughs> okay, filet of fish comes enough. through for you. Fair enough. All right. Well, it's there when you need it. You can trust it. On that it's note. It's like the Drew Brown of sandwiches. <laughs> on that note, let's, let's enter into the... Let's enter into the color portion. Uh, you ready to go, Drew? No. Me neither. All we're right. Gonna, we're going to do it That's anyway. That's how we know when it's time. <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome, everybody, to episode number 100 of the Goulet Pencast. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is where, where fountain pens are still a thing, and we have uh, many people here to prove that that is the case. Uh, I am Brian Goulet. I am Drew Brown. And we're here from Goulet Pens at the DC Pen Show 2023 to deliver this, this casual and informal, tangential and extraneous, superfluous and extemporaneous fountain pen show where we talk about what's going on at the Goulet Pen Company and in our fountain pen lives. And today it's going to be a little different format. We are somewhat prepared and somewhat ill prepared. A nice combination of both, which maybe fits on theme with the whole pen cast. But uh, I got to give Drew props because he's done a lot of preparation for this. This is special. It's 100 episodes of the Pencast. I don't know how you all have kept up with 100 episodes. <laughs> Even Rachel is like, I don't understand why people watch the Pencast. I'm like, I don't either. <laughs> but they do and we love it and we'll keep doing it. So um, it's a looser format than usual. You know, we've got we've gotten to a rhythm with the Pencast um, by this point. I think yeah. we got, you know, the new stuff and the, you know, feedback and all that kind of stuff. We're, we're gonna do a little less of that. So obviously, because so those of you who are watching this on video, we have, I don't know how many of you all are here, 100, 120, something like, like that. 12. It's a good, no, it's a good number of people. <laughs> it's a good number of people. So uh, we get to do some crowd work today, which is kind of fun. Um, so the like way- surfing. That, yes, uh, yeah, if you, if you want to. Um, yeah, I don't know if y'all could surf me. I'm a little, <laughs> little heavier than Drew, but anyway. Uh, so we're gonna be taking live questions from the audience today. That's mainly what we're doing. And we're gonna talk about what we've uh, been doing at the show. So uh, it should be a good time had by all. And then we're doing a meet and greet afterwards. So we'll maybe end the pencast a little early and then get to hang out with the people who uh, have given up other more important things in their life to come and see us in person. So anyway, we'll be publishing this as usual, but we're right now live at the show. And uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's about all I have to say at this point. So that's Drew? plenty. Okay. So I have no show notes. I have no deep dives. I have that's no fine. research. No, what I was so going I feel, to do. I feel very naked I right was, now. I was going to do, wise. I was going to do feedback <laughs> from the last episode, but I didn't do that. Oh, yeah. well, there you go. Yeah, okay. I was going to use my phone and look at the YouTube <laughs> comments and I, and I neglected to do that. So I have no feedback, um, but I think I could just uh, I can pull it up real quick. Let everybody know that uh, we both have almost successfully lost our voices. So that's we're a little gravelly right yeah. now. I am much better than I was when I woke up. When I woke up, I was like, I'm not gonna be able to talk at all. But yeah, you. So I was in my hotel room this morning, and I'm staying alone. Rachel's with her family right now because they live in the area. And um, Drew texted me, and he's like, Yeah, I think I've kind of lost my voice. And I was like, I haven't yet talked yet what so did you what did I you say know. like while you're by yourself did you just be like la 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 i think i just like mumbled something i was like yeah i was like oh <laughs> yep it's uh it's interesting so yeah it's better but i was not the one that stayed up till 2 a.m last night uh 3 a.m actually i stayed downstairs until you know about two or so. and then you got upstairs you're like you know what i need to do more stuff more work yes indeed did you bring some like logs no i didn't just like you tra travel logs hey <laughs> 
That's pretty good. That's pretty good, Drew. No, I did bring a couple Rubik's cubes though. So it's like literally thing. like sawing logs to fall asleep. Like that's a th that's a thing. That's that's pretty Brian good. Brian Gulley literally you're, saws logs. You're bordering dad joke territory here. Yes, Drew. but I it's got to warn you. No, but it, but it, but this is natural. <laughs> this is not like hey, what do you call it? Meh, 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 meh. That's lame. This is great. This is brilliant. Drew is a walking conundrum. He's very specific about certain things, and then other it's things he's more impressive when it is spur of the moment. It's Indeed. called wit. Yes, there you go. Um, well, let's start off by talking about what the show has been like for us. This is my first pen show that I've been to in four years. So I used to go to the DC show every year. My first one was in 2009. And as of many of you know, who've heard this story time and time again, I sort of had like an epiphany in 20, uh, 2009 of like, I don't know what fountain pens are, but these people are awesome and I need to learn about this. And that's what got the whole ball rolling. So being at this show specifically is very sentimental to me. And I haven't been able to go either because of COVID or family conflicts for the last four years. So going back here has been super meaningful. And I just gotta say, it's been the most exciting and vibrant show that I've attended. It's probably out of the 10 or 12 shows I've been to the, in my the time most here. most busy probably. And it's very busy. And y'all are just amazing to see how excited everybody is. Yeah, give yourselves a hand. It's just, y'all are awesome. And uh, big credit to Drew. He's helped prep a lot, not only for all 100 episodes of the PenCast, but for this show and all the gear and equipment. I'll be honest, Drew was like, we should do a live thing. And I was like, oh my God, Drew, we don't need these many complications. Let's keep it simple. And he was like, no, I think we can do it. And I was like, all right, if you want to take it on, I'll support you and I'll, we'll do it together, but like you can kind of run with it. And he really stepped up. So I was, I was credit pack, to Drew. packing everything up and I've told other people this, you know, <laughs> packing everything up. And I was thinking to myself as I'm like unplugging everything we use every week, I'm just like, I'm ruining all of this. But I was, <laughs> I, I, so I was telling people, I was like, Brian, Brian either trusts me far more than he should, or he just doesn't care how good, how good this looks. It's a nice mixture of both. I that, think, I, that's know? what people responded yeah. with. Yeah. People, th th there was people like, oh no, I'm sure he trusts you. But then a lot, most people were just like, yeah, it's probably both. It's a nice mixture. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so prop, right. props to you, Drew. I appreciate it. And it's great to be here. I mean, we haven't published it yet, but thank you. That's true. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it all sounds when we yeah. look at it in post-production. It's like, We oh, did, okay. like, I mean, we did, like, bring a light. We didn't use that. We brought a green screen. Didn't use that. Didn't so use it's that. not like, you know, Yeah. But it's, we have a camera. We We're came here. prepared, yes. I think microphones are working, so. Drew had to run to the store, like, three times to get the right cables for the PA system and all this kind of stuff. So all the behind-the-scenes things, you know, just so you all appreciate that. But anyway. Okay. Um, so Drew, what has your experience been like at the show? So it's right now as we're recording this, it's like midday on Sunday. We both came on Friday. Yeah. So it's been like a solid almost two days. So yeah. what's it been like for you? Um, not busy at all. Very relaxing. <laughs> yeah. Very quiet. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Um, no, it has been a it's it's like a uh tornado of delight, is oh. what I would probably say. You wow. know? Delight. You it's like it's like uh Twister, but There's a sticker design there. It's like around. Twister, but Bill Paxton's <laughs> just swirling around with like sunshines and rainbows. Yeah, you know, yeah. he he was tied to his little driving pipe. around in his red Dodge was, Ram. You know, yeah, yeah. Instead Looking of cows, to get Dorothy instead of the cows, it's yep. pens. I guess I don't know. No, it's been it's been amazing and wonderful and delightful and magical and special as they tend to be. Yeah, but it has been very busy. Like, yeah, it really has. It, the thing, you know, there's there's not a lot of walking space in between the aisles. You know, so. I kind of feel I feel bad for stopping and looking at things mm. because I'm like someone needs to get by me right now, yeah. so I can't look at this. So it's just been kind of like I just I look as I lap. Mm. Okay. So you know I kind of do wish I could just stand and chill for a little bit without feeling bad, but uh, you know you go with the flow. Literally, yeah. um, spoke with a lot of you, and it has been delightful. Um, just you know meeting people that I like friends I haven't met honestly. And uh, if you know, some if people are always like, oh, I know this is weird. I'm like, no, no, not at all. Like, I, I know you already. It's cool. It's all good. Yeah. Um, so, no, every time, you know, you go to one of these things, it just makes me see more people in there when we chat in the uh, in the yeah. studio. Because normally it's me and Drew in a somewhat dark room talking yeah. into a camera lens. But it's so much more after <laughs> you know? a show like this because, you know, while I don't have a photographic memory, I do... It, there, that connection always remains. That mm -hmm. connection lasts. And it's that very deep, you know, rich feeling that you are um, connected in a really special way with the people that we talk to. And I, I just, I, I don't know what other, you know, hobbies and industries are like, but 
I can't imagine that there's many of this type of communities out there. And no, it's this is just, special. It's this is really special. But like you said, like it's like when you first came and you saw uh, what this dynamic is, you just want to be a part of that. Yeah. And it just, I'm floored with gratitude every time I'm able to come and be a part of what we've all built here. And uh, I just am humbled and delighted that we all have a special little place in it. That's not cheesy. It's all right. Cheese is good, Drew. <laughs> cheese is great. Cheese is good. <laughs> if it weren't for cheese, I don't think I'd be able to stand up. Yeah. Uh, I feel the same way. You know, I arrived here. <laughs> is that a quote or something? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Just move on. Honestly, sometimes Drew says things and my brain is transitioning to like, what am I going to say? And then I sort of catch what Drew said. Don't like, listen. Don't what? listen. Just, just move on. <laughs> you just go. You just yeah. go. It's all good. It's all good. Mm -hmm. um, it just flows like cheese out of your mouth. Shut I guess. up. Like a, <laughs> what has your experience like been a, like, Brian? Like a fondue cheese fountain God. of words. Uh, yeah, so my experience has been great. I mean, I arrived, so I came up I came up early because like I said, Rachel's family's in the area. So we came up Thursday, got to hang out with the fam quite a bit. And, uh, and so then I came to the show actually on Friday, like late on Friday. Um, and the way the show works for those of you who are not actually at the show and haven't experienced this, but um, there's it's like basically a four day show. Um, but Thursday and Friday are, you know, it's like a weekend, like a full weekend pass costs a little more. And uh, it's a lot of where people, especially who are into vintage pens and stuff like that, are trading with each other and stuff like that. And like the, the hardcore folks come and stay like all four days. Um, so it's definitely less busy on like Thursday and Friday. But I came at Friday at like 430. I was like, oh my gosh, there are so many people here. I was like, this weekend's going to be busy and yeah. definitely has been. So it just, it it's interesting to me because, you know, I come to this show and I get to see, you know, not only you all who know us uncomfortably well, <laughs> but, you know, I've been, I've been coming here since 2009 and I get to see people who I've seen since 2009, you know, whether it's you know, hardcore pen fans that have been coming here time and time and people that we work with, vendors that we buy through, other, you know, retailers and stuff like that who are, you know, in the same stuff that we are and just getting to connect with people and talk to them. I mean, it's literally like an entire year's worth of um, communication over a digital medium, but getting to do it in person, it's like jet fuel, you know, for my soul. So I really love getting to spend this time, which is why I'm like, I'm gonna spend every waking minute talking to people as much as possible, because this is like- Literally. What I live for, so. I actually spoke to awesome. a lady yesterday who had a coupon from your first pen show when you exhibited. You were giving away like a 10% coupon or something? That is Do you legit. remember that? Shit, yes. Yeah, she- <laughs> I remember that. She, she still has it. And she's like, I wow. wonder if it still works. I was like, if you call us, we it will. It doesn't work. I was like, no. <laughs> We've changed web hosts no, twice. No, but I said, if you call yeah. us, we'll, you get your 10%. That is amazing. So for, for context here, we went to the show in 2009. I wasn't I wasn't selling fountain pens. I had nothing to do with fountain pens at that time. I was making handmade pens. I came because I'd heard from a buddy of mine that there's this pen show. I'm like, what is a pen show? He's like, it's kind of like a Comic-Con for pens. And I was like, what's a Comic-Con? Because I didn't know what Comic-Con was. <laughs> But he was like a bunch of people come and hang out and trade pens and stuff. And I was like, OK, you know, but um, I came here and I was like, whoa, this is this is weird. This is cool. I didn't know people had fishing vests filled with pens in all the pockets. And I was like, all right, I, I'm into the cargo thing. So I'm like, That's I'm true. on board. These are my people. Uh, bought my first bottle of ink. I'd never inked a pen before that show. Went home, spilled it as I tried to fill it. <laughs> wasn't the color I thought it was because I had no swab or anything like that. So it was a formative experience for me as a newbie to come to a show and like many of you all, I mean, pretty much all of you here know more than I did when I came to my first show. It was totally overwhelming for me, but I was like, I got to learn more. So I dove in deep. That doesn't sound like they it. were like, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but at that time, 2009, there were basically no videos. Instagram didn't exist yet. YouTube, people didn't know what it was really. You know, all these social media channels was like not really a thing, especially in like, you know, any type of retail business type setting. So I really had to like scrap it together. There was the Fountain Pen Network forum. There were like random message boards and, you know, IRC chat type things like super early internet kind of things. And I was like, I had to scrape it all together to figure out what was going on with these pens. And I was like, there has to be a better way <laughs> to learn about fountain pens than making it like this much work. And so that was kind of my epiphany it was like, okay, 
if there's kind of the the old guard of folks who were used fountain pens in school and like already know and appreciate them but how does somebody at the time i was 25 how does somebody know uh, who's you know not been exposed to pens their whole life like i had how do they get to know these awesome pens and get to meet these awesome people if it's this hard to try and figure it out and i was like well I think I know how we might be able to do it. All I have to do is learn everything about pens, learn everything about <laughs> social media and video production and blogging and website and HR and taxes and shipping and logistics. And uh, I was like, still cool, still cool, working cool, on cool, that, cool, huh? cool, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so I came home, I told Rachel and I was like, Rachel, I think this is what we need to do. And she was like, great. Does that mean we can actually like start maybe selling some stuff? Cause I've been making pens for three years and it was basically a glorified hobby and all I was doing was paying for my tools. Um, and so she was like, great. And we were, we were expecting our first child at the time. And I was like, I really need to figure out a sustainable <laughs> income here because I can't just kind of goof around like I have been. So uh, I'm super grateful. Like I, I still, I mean, I, I say this at the office all the time. I'm like, every order that we get that comes in, I'm like, every order is a gift. <laughs> like it is not a given that fountain pens will still be valued and appreciated and all this kind of stuff. So it's like, I really, really take every single day as the gift that it is. And you all are a huge part of that. And you know, we put out tons of content like this. We don't charge for it. It's out there for free. People can watch it. People can learn from it and buy anywhere they want to. And the fact that we've been doing this now for 14 years on that kind of like, trade of trust and you know helping each other out to me is like such a testament to I'm gonna get a little sentimental such a testament to like the goodwill of people because let's be honest there's a lot of like discouraging crap out there in the news and stuff that we can really focus on but like for me personally when I get to interact with you all on a daily basis I'm like there is hope there's hope for this world <laughs> we can like love and support each other and be there for each other without trying to like game things and like siphon data and use it against each other and you know fake things and try and trick each other like it seems like happens all the time out there i'm like this is so real and so like personal and we connect with each other and that's what's honestly keeps me motivated after doing this for quite a long time and i have my moments where drew i'm a bit curmudgeonly perhaps where you know especially since covid like things get really hard sometimes running a business and doing all that kind of stuff but like honestly when i stop and think about it for like four and a half seconds i'm just like wow well, yeah, this is like amazing to be in this every day i'm so grateful so honestly that's that's been kind of like a revitalizing reminder for me being at the show and getting to talk to all of you and just talk to other people in the industry too um you know it's so many good people that are here you know the independent folks who are making pens and ink and they're super passion driven and they're just trying to like find a way to meet y'all's needs and create new and interesting things. And I'm like, yes, let's do that. And connecting with people and being like, hey, I know running a business is hard. Shoot me an email. Let me know if you got some weird, you know, real estate thing that you're dealing with that's behind the scenes. But like, I've been there. I know what's going on. So getting to connect with folks in that way, honestly, has been as meaningful for me as getting to meet you all and just kind of goof around and talk goofy pen stuff. So it's speaking it's of talking, talking so goofy pen stuff for me. Yeah. Oh, we got some questions. We've got lots of questions. Do you want to go All ahead right, and dig, dig into them? In. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Adrian, what do you think? I think we're ready to go. With this oh, top let's one? Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. This top cool. one is uh, Anonymous. So mm -hmm. shout out mm -hmm. to Anonym Anon Anonymous. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, God. This is brutal, but good one, Adrian. Uh, you're mad at each other and have to choose a pen for the other to use for a month. <laughs> what is the pen? That's a great question. Did you write this one? Is no, that you? No. It seems like you. No. That was uh, you? That's a great Anno question. Anonymous. Mouse. That's a great question. <laughs> Mad at each other. Hmm. Um, yeah, unfortunately, Brian's not super averse to texture the way his wife is, so I can't go that route. Yeah. I would probably pick something just really small and angular. Mm. Like, um... Like, uh, man, what what could it be? Like, I know you do not like holding the CP1. Um, I probably not go, that I don't like it. It's just that it's, it's just that you really don't like thin. it. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's just my number jam, but that's all right. Um, I don't know. I kind of like see. everything. I know. Well, it's a hard. It's a hard I, question. Yeah, it's harder for you than for me because I I have I'm more opinionated and less diplomatic mm. than you. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's see. I know what I would pick for you. Oh, dang it. 
Yeah, I would make Drew use the Delta Amalfi. Oh, God. <laughs> Which is the go-to pen that Drew hates, but I love in a weird way. I would just make him, I would make him look at it all month. It just makes me do that thing where you have like a hair on your tongue and you're just like, <laughs> I just, that. Ah, ah. And I think I love it more because <laughs> of how it makes Drew feel. Yeah. We always joke that it's I, not it's, a pretty pet. We always joke. We always joke that I'm like a, a Highlander, and it's like when whenever I see Drew, just like kind of. There's cringe. one Highlander, Brian. They're all immortals. Yes. Connor McCloud is the Highlander. <laughs> They're not Highlanders. Well, whatever. So whenever whenever I see Drew kind of cringe like that, I'm like, yes, I'm like absorbing his like life force. I know. In company <laughs> meetings, he'll tell out a bad joke and just look right and I'll just at look me. Look right at Drew. Like, mm -hmm. He's my barometer. Yes. Yes, that's good. <laughs> all right. So what would you pick? For well, me, see, Drew? I see, I could write with the Amalfi if I didn't look at it. If I just wrote with a blindfold, I'm like, this is fine. Mm, this is okay. fine. I just wouldn't look. For a whole month, Drew. My look, writing would, you would be have to bad. Look at it. You would have to look at it. I know. You would have to. That's disappointing, Brian. Yeah. Okay. What um, you got for me? Yeah, I'd probably go with like the metal CP1. You know, just oh, okay. cold and tiny. Yeah. <laughs> it's slippery. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't yeah. love it. I don't hate that pen, but it's not. Yeah. It wouldn't be the most comfortable thing for me. Yeah. So the, the, metal, the metal one, you know, definitely you know, it would. I don't think it'd be comfortable for you. Okay. It's a good one. Good yeah. choice. And it, good choice. you know, your hands will be in pain later, and I would just enjoy that. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Awesome. Our buddy, Mr. Twyler, showing up here, saying, well, now, now I'm just going to let, let everybody know that um, Mr. Mr. Uh, John Detweiler uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. wants... Hold on. No, the f <laughs> artist formerly known um, uh, wrote in, and instead of J.A. Detweiler, um, Brian was like, oh, okay, Jade Twyler. <laughs> you know, writes in, and then uh, so now he's just officially changed his name now. So he's Jade Twyler now. And uh, no. <laughs> were there any pens that excited you, but you decided weren't for you when you used them? Oh, plenty, plenty. Like I, I remember being really excited to get um, my first. Uh, what was it? I think it was a. Um, it was a. Rembrandt. It was a Visconti Rembrandt. And I got super stoked about that. And it just did not like me at all. And uh, I no longer have that. I parted ways with the Rembrandt. And then there it was a weird nib issue. It was like one of their older nibs, um, their older steel nibs. And I just never, I was never into those. And then let's see, well, there was, oh, there's been a couple now that I think about it. Um, none that like super let me down because I, you know, Fortunately, work at a fountain pen company, so buying something without trying it is not really something I have to do. Um, I can usually get my hands on it beforehand, but definitely have been disappointed by writing experiences for sure and had to take them to get worked on. Do you have any that pop into your mind? You know, that's a question again because I forgot it. As what are you we're doing? About it. <laughs> were you, were there I'm trying to like take notes on Why what we just notes? said because we're like talking about pens. You are? Oh, perfect. Great. Get out of here. Stop doing work. Okay. Sorry, what it, was were the there, a pen you're excited about, but were let down by when you actually got it? I have a really good one, um, and I keep this in mind. This was like one of my one of my early Grail pens, um, and it was it was a combination of I set my expectations probably a little higher than I should, and it was also a nib that I never had any experience with, and. Yeah, Jane knows exactly which one it is. She's like, it's the Pelican M800. Yes. So Pelican, I mean, this was highly aspirational for me at the time. Yeah. We weren't even selling, I think we were selling the Pelicano, Pelicano Jr., like the $20, $30 Pelicans, yeah. but nothing with a gold nib. But, you know, we were Pelican dealers, so I was able to, you know, get my little uh, get my little deal in there. Um, so I got, to, I got to get a pen. They were coming out with the M800 uh, in blue. Uh, with a 1.5 millimeter stub and I'd never used any gold stub before at the time and I built it up in my head I loved stubs I love steel nibs I had the pelican script which was like an early stub nib that I really loved um, and I was like this is going to be the most amazing pen at the time it was something like five six hundred dollars and I had nothing anywhere near that price range um, and so I bought it got my hopes up a lot and then I used it and I had some babies bottom to it and it just wasn't uh, it kind of skipped a little bit and, you know, I, I didn't know all the things that I know now about how to like adjust and tweak and stuff like that. And I was so excited for when that pen came. And then when I use it, it was just like a, 
oh my gosh, like hang in my head kind of a thing. Um, I've since learned how to tweak and stuff like that. And so Baby's bomb's still kind of hard to fix though. Like you got especially on a stub. You gotta, oh on yeah, stub. no, you got to regrind that. So it was, it was a new nib that they hadn't put on that pen before and they were figuring some things out. Not knocking Pelican at all, they're great pens, but that that stub in particular was a, was a bit of a challenge and it just really, you know, there's there's pivotal things like that. As I was new to pens, you know, which was like trying to fill my pen for the first time, trying to clean my pen when it wasn't, you know, functioning properly and using different nibs for the first time, trying to use flex for the first time and being like, what the actual F is going on here? What the actual flex? Yes, yeah. what the actual flex. <laughs> That's what he meant. Yes. Um, and just like having to literally just go through all the trials and tribulation, tribulations that you all experience as you learn new pen things for the first time, but not really knowing anybody who knew pen. So I really had to stumble and figure it out on my own. Um, and I was like, this sucks. This sucks having to be this ignorant. And I'm going to try and figure this out and share it out so that other people don't have to feel this alone and ignorant. And that's fueled me even to this day. I have these memories early on in the first couple of years, especially as I was figuring things out on my own and being like, it shouldn't have to be this way. Like we have the internet, we have connectivity, we have the ability to show things on video and, you know, stuff like that. We can instruct each other better. There's so much knowledge. There's so much generosity of information and people wanting to share with each other. Like it just, but at that time it wasn't, it, you know, it wasn't, uh, it hadn't like gotten into the, the, the flow, like of the internet and stuff like that yet. Um, so I kept that firmly in mind and that informed a lot of things that informed doing ink samples for us that informed doing the swabs, really focusing on color accuracy and inf informed a lot of early content, blog posts, videos, all that kind of stuff. It was all motivated by I really don't want other people to have to work this hard to enjoy their pens. And so to be on the other side of that now and seeing how much it has been repeatedly told here, like your videos have been so helpful and just how much you all get to enjoy it and how you're like, I discovered pens six months ago and hearing what y'all are doing with pens now, I'm like, oh my God, it took me five years to be able to get where you are now after a few months. And it's like, that's so awesome. I'm so glad that it's, like kind of worked out like I hoped that it would like early on like that. So, yeah, now like, if, you, if you did have a, a nib issue on a pen you spent a ton of money on, getting to a nib technician is so much easier yeah. than it used to be. Like you go to a- sh There were like know, two. Yeah, back, back the then there was like Richard two. Richard Bender and Mike Masayama and now, were like the only ones that I really knew. Now there's like half a dozen at every show. It's, it's fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, yeah. Adrian, we doing uh, um, another Anno Niemals up top here? Um, or is it- uh, Yeah, what do you want to do? Yeah, this blue one? Yeah. Okay. If you were a pen? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you were a pen, Brian, mm. what pen would you be and why? Oh my gosh. Um, what pen would I be and why? Gosh, this is where I usually like to yeah, 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 go this... on the website and look at some pens, remind myself of some things. Hmm. That's, that's a tough one for me too. I don't know. Adrian, what do you think? Mm -hmm. What would Brian be? Don't in, you mean, don't insult him in any way. Mm. Don't make this. Don't don't. Oh, uh, sapiens. A I am, human being. I am a person. My God, so that is very fitting. <laughs> wow, very fitting. Yeah, yeah. And he is always hot. You know, you got that like volcanic thing going. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. 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 Except you're not exactly hy hy hygroscopic. I don't know. I can <laughs> more expelling moisture than absorbing it, but you know, um, that's a pretty solid one. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, do resonate I need to with find what's pen. a pen. What's a pen that is like pretty okay at a lot of things, but not really great at any of them. Oh, that's <laughs> that'd be me. What's what's a pen that like does a pretty good job in most things, but like no one would be like, yeah, this is the best at something. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No. <laughs> The tool pen. How do we eject somebody? The rainbow tool pen. How do we eject? The rainbow tool pen, because Drew's so colorful and vibrant. He's so versatile, he'll do anything you want, but not that My great. problem is I react to things, so I, I'm just, no, no, it's fine, that's whatever. A really, <laughs> that's a really good answer. I'm not answer. bothered by that. So are you the, no, it's not are a you good the answer. Dwight of our company? Ew, no, is that what you are? Because Dwight was a tool pen. I don't know, Drew. I'm a little bit of a, I'm a little, I'm a cross between, if you took Dwight from office and then uh um what uh, what's an adam scott's character from parks and rec uh ben wyatt ben yeah i'm like a, a little bit of ben and dwight i think combined because i'm not as smart as ben 
Well, he's a made up person. He's yeah, but he's an like, person. He's like a, he's like an accountant. I couldn't do that. I'm like a useless. True. I'm like a useless Ben. True. Yeah. True. But now let's see. What's what's a pen <laughs> that can do a lot of things? Okay, but it's like not like great at any mm. of them. I like think. a Kaveco Sport, maybe. Like it's fine. You're hating on the sport, but man. no, no, you're, it's popular. You're... It's a popular pen. Pretty good. Sells yeah. pretty well. It's like everybody's got one, but it's like no one's favorite. It's okay. like yeah, you know, maybe I'll bring back Kaveco. It's fine. Okay. Fair enough. Sorry about any. You're like huge Kaveco fans. They're, they're, they're good. Yeah, they're way good. to go, they're, Drew. They're just not Way to go, Drew. Way to, best. way to crap on one of the brands you carry here. I like a brand. It's fine. They're good. They're just, <laughs> this, this is a Kaveco sport. You there know, you there's, they're in a drawer there's somewhere. A, there's a brilliant brown Kaveco. There you go. Maybe the all-star. I want to be golden espresso. Golden espresso. There you go. Golden espresso. That's pretty good. Um, we got another question here. This is from Catherine. Was the show episode being 100, this episode, <laughs> an accident or planned? Uh, mostly accident. It just was, yes. I would say not accident, but it was more serendipitous. Fortuitous, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, we were paying attention to about what time frame that the, the you know, 100 would come about. Uh, I think we started really paying attention to it, you know, probably like early spring this year. Because we were like, oh, 100's coming up. We should do something. You know, we didn't know what. And Drew was like, we should live stream it. Do da da da. And I was like, mm, that's <laughs> so much can go wrong. Uh, so then, when the timing of the pen show was looking to happen around that, it was like, okay, okay, maybe. But you know, the way that it works is we have you know a videographer, like contractor guy, who helps us edit these things and. The longer they get, the longer it takes to edit these things every week. Um, so whenever he's out and he's got a family and stuff like that, whenever Drew's got stuff to do, I've got stuff to do. You know, thankfully Adrian can step in for me a little bit now. But um, you know, basically, whenever one of us is out, we're like, oh, we might have to cancel the pencast. So for the last several months, the which week would be episode one hundred sort of shifted a little bit. So it was really maybe two two months ago, six weeks ago, something like that. We were like, oh, as we kind of like had our schedules more locked in with like our time off and families and stuff, we were like, oh, I think I think the DC pension if might nothing naturally goes wrong, fall one hundred. Yeah, if nothing goes wrong, it might. We still, I think, are going to do a uh, live stream at some point. We'd like it. It's not that hard. We can get on YouTube and do that. So we're still planning to do that because. You know, obviously the folks just, you know, watching remotely here are not going to have a wow, fun episode 100 like all y'all are having because this is right. You know. uh, but we're like, uh, video wise, it's probably going to be a worse. Yeah. So we're, we're, Q&A, you know, we're, we're, we'll one still, than, we'll still do experience something. Is cool, yeah. yeah, we'll still do something for y'all. Um, but actually, y'all might want. No, you won't. Um, <laughs> but uh, that that's definitely still in the cards for the future, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, we just need to do one and realize just how easy and effortless it is. And then we can do a bunch more. I've done too many live streams to know that it's neither easy it's better nor effortless. Now. Yeah. The technology has advanced. Okay. Especially with like COVID stuff, remote okay. streaming, you know, video with the mm -hmm. internet. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. all yep. we'll see, technologies. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Are better. Yeah. There um, we go. We do have a we do have a poll for everybody here uh, live. Oh come on. Uh, which keeper. which shirt wins? The bananas or traffic keeper? So um, you get to vote on that. We'll let you all vote, and then we'll we'll see in a minute. I am appalled. Oh, oh stop it. <laughs> okay. Get out. Um, Casey says, I want a pilot FA Falcon nib with a custom 912, but heard that the feed doesn't keep up well with the flex nib and the 742 is a better pen due to the ebonite feed. Thoughts? 742 doesn't have an ebonite feed. 742? We don't have yeah, 742. Neither the 742 or the 743. 743. Those are those are still plastic feeds. I don't, yeah. They don't get, they don't get. I don't believe the feeds are any different. Actually, I don't think that um, Pilot has ebonite feeds on anything. I don't even think their Emperor is not even ebonite. Um, no, it's still. I know it's coded in Narushi. It I don't is, but know. you know, Pilot doesn't do ebonite feeds. Um, but yes, the I, I my my nine twelve, I did replace it with an aftermarket um, feed from Flexible Nib Factory. It was a you can get a two channel feed or a three channel feed from them. Mm -hmm. I got a two channel and it works amazingly well. So, mm -hmm. um, but I have heard. I, I did you get an FA on your seven forty three? I did. How, how's that doing for you? It's really good. It's so really yeah, maybe good. go for to, maybe go for seven forty three. But you just have to write slow. That's all. You can't write fast if you're trying to flex that thing at all. I write slow with my 912, but just because it's got a double extra fine on it. So if yeah, you write quickly yeah. with that, it's just like a tip of a like a needle. 
Yeah, so that's um, fair. it's and the, not the ink, pleasant. The ink matters too. Like yeah. using a wetter ink helps it flow better. Um, so some of it's like anytime you add flex to any situation, you're complicating things quite a bit. And it's just not going to write as easy as a non-flex nib will be. So you're going to have to tinker. You're going to have to experiment. You're going to have to play with the ink and the paper options. Um, but, you know, the, F the FA nib is a great nib. Yeah. Um, not to be confused at all with the Pilot Falcon, which is a totally different pen, totally different nib and feed. But the FA Falcon nib on things like the 912, it's a totally different yeah. nib. Um, BK, can you shoot me a thumbs up to see if you got a uh, you got an Ebonite feed on your 912? Yeah, man. Okay, so okay, Brian's other the Brian, three other Brian feed. went too much. He was in his in his hubris. He thought he could tame. He thought he could tame a three channel feed. He was like, Drew's got a two channel. I'm gonna one up. Foolhardy. Him. That's right. <laughs> Foolhardy, Brian. There you um, go. But no, they do fit nicely. All right. Anana Mouse again asks, what is Drew's favorite ink? I don't have one. Today. What is your favorite ink today? Um, today. Butter I'm, popcorn? Are you still into butter I'm popcorn? I'm still very much into butter popcorn, but I'm still very yeah. much into Diamond Winter Spice. Winter spice and yeah, uh, let's see. Right now, I kind of like fell back in love with Diamond uh, Green Black. I'm really enjoying that one. Oh, I kind of forgot about that. Yeah, I used to love that ink. and I've done, ink. I inked that ink. up in one of my uh, pilots, and I've been really enjoying that. But... I switch it up so much. I rarely ink up um, the same thing twice. Like Diamond Green Black, I haven't used that a second time in like seven years. Mm. So it's been a while. So I, I like to switch it up. And I, we've got like 800 inks like 50 yards away from me at all times. Y'all would do the same thing, I'm sure. Like it's, <laughs> why repeat when you don't, when there's so much more. And there's so much continuing to come out too every week. Like, you know, Ferris Wheel Press alone, there's like another one every week. So yeah, yeah. Um, it is a target rich environment, I will say. There you go. Uh, but no, I've never had like, for for a, for a little while, I've had like you know pockets of things where I'm like, oh, that's my favorite, but only until another one comes around. So, but no, I'm just I'm a I'm a I'm a fickle fickle man. But I love a lot. Just I love equally. There you go. It's a very Brianny answer of you, Drew. It kind of is. But I was quick in saying it. I very definitively says I don't. I very definitively said I don't have one. I can't argue with that. Yeah. <laughs> you know it is true. Um, Eric says, is there a brand that you really, really want with apologies to the Spice Girls? Oh, the... tell us what you want, Brian. What you really, uh, what I really, really want. Really want. <laughs> Little fun fact, Rachel and I do that to each other all the time. You know, if we're like going out to dinner or something like that, I'm like, Rachel, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. She goes, I'll tell you what I want, <laughs> what I really, really want. Nice. And then we'll basically like speak the whole lyrics to the thing. That's we do that. We do that way too much. Interesting. Um, what brand I really, really want? How about something that doesn't exist anymore? Can, oh. we, can we have? Oh, uh, I wasn't even thinking of like going back <laughs> in time. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, let's mm -hmm, see. Mm -hmm. uh, we wouldn't say no to Hobonichi. Hobonichi would be good. We've we've been in contact with them for yeah. like a decade. Wouldn't say no to that. But they they only want to sell through brick and mortar stores. Yeah. So they basically so. Have said no um, repeatedly. So. But that's still wouldn't wouldn't say no to that. Yeah, I mean, the big one for me, obviously, is Mont Blanc. Like, a lot of people ask us about Mont Blanc, but they have a brick-and-mortar kind of stipulation thing, too. I've been pretty open about that. Um, you know, so, like, if there was a situation where there was an alignment of the way that we both wanted to do business together, that would obviously be, like, the biggest one for for me. It's kind of the white whale. Yeah. But I'm also not going to, like, change the whole way that we do things just to carry one brand, you know? So, it's like... I've been in talks with them, and they were like, literally, I've been in talks with them. They'd be like, well, if you ever want to set up a brick and mortar store, let us know and we'll do business. And I was like, well, if you ever want to not do a brick and mortar store <laughs> and sell online only, you let me know and we'll do business together. And it's yeah. kind of just like right there. So, you know, I would say if Ian Schoen came up to me, be like, I want to sell all my stuff through your store, that would be Boom. yes. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Great. Just, let's do that. We'll just adopt you and just, you know, <laughs> move in with us. That would be amazing. Yeah. We'll all slumber together. No, for me, it'd be cool like the, the, one, the ones I think of are like, you know, like if I could just like add like some sort of magical potion to make, you know, a small batch maker just like explode in output and, you know, and we'd be able to just sell a bazillion of them. That would be, that would be my, that would be my pick. Yeah. There you go. All right. Other Drew. Oh, is this Minnesota Drew? There he is. Nice. Drew from the Great White North asks, if you were creating a pen show and could have anything or anyone pres present? present, 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 what would it have? If you were creating a pen show and could have anything or anyone present, mm. what would it have? Oh, okay. Mm. Like celebrities and stuff? Mm -hmm. Anything. All right. Mm. <laughs> Just saw his hands. 
Um, hmm, if I was creating a pen show and could have anyone. All right, well, definitely celebrities. You know, Michael Bean would be there for sure. No one would recognize him. No, and he'd be completely apathetic. <laughs> You'd find um, it in. And, Drew loves uh, Michael Bean, and I make fun of him for it all the time. Michael Bean's amazing. Yeah, Johnny Ringo. Um, There's no reaction because none of you know who he is. So <laughs> they're they're just. But Drew loves him. Um, <laughs> let's see. Let's see. I would get uh, Timothy Oliphant, so my wife would have a reason to come. Yeah, mm. she wouldn't be looking at pens. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, I would bring I would bring the celebrities that I know are hardcore pen fans, like uh, Neil Gaiman. Neil, another um, Neil Tyson. Yes, Neil deGrasse yep. Tyson, um, uh, Deborah Messing, um, Al Roker, Al Roker um, Nathan Fillion. You know, these are all people that like I know are like true pen fans that I think would I think be... Alton Brown uses them too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it would be cool because they would not be celebrities. They would just be like pen nerds with all of us. That would be really that would be really fun. So I would try to keep it like not like blessed to the public. I'd try and keep it more of like a pen centric thing, but try and get like more like famous pen people to have a more like down to earth like pen nerding experience. I, I would, think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, apart from celebrities though, I need I think it needs to be more physical. You know, there needs to be physical challenges. There needs to be <laughs> a um like you know one of those jousting things with the with the pugil sticks. Like the American but gladiator. But they be giant fountain pens like, you could beat other people with. <laughs> um there needs to be like I'm thinking some sort of like an American gladiator style event. But instead of like, uh, instead of like American a giant cotton swab that you can like, yeah, exactly, you know, exactly, the... perfect. Like this, yeah. possibilities are endless. This whole thing is way, <laughs> it's not physical enough. Not physical enough. We're not, we're not hitting each other enough. Okay. We need to that 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 sense of adrenaline needs to be there. That sense of danger, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, you know that uh, you know we need people like the American Gladiators stationed around the show that just attack you for no reason, keep you on keep you on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing bad could happen there. No, not at all. Yeah. No liability issues no, with that at all. None. Well, as long as you put signs up and say when you enter this door, you are you know now accepting the terms, and American gladiators can attack you. You know, but like that. At least they had that. They had that thing where they were like blasting people with those like balls, and they tried to hide behind things. Mm. Yeah. That this is be, great. Be, yeah. This is great. What a show that would be. That would be quite a show. <laughs> that would be quite a show. Be you great. see what, when we brainstorm, I'm like, my God, Drew, like, where can we, can we find some middle ground here? Anyway. I'm just, uh, I've, I've always, I've always wanted fun. to like, it's I don't fun. know why they don't have like a public American gladiators thing you could just go to with your friends. They got like a little I know trampoline why. park. Because but I want to go somewhere. Nightmare. I want to go somewhere with my friends and be like, all right, let's try to get up this mountain while these other large humans try to attack us like that's what i want to do i mean they have like time. they have like trampoline places that's and not enough rock for me. climbing wall it's i want to get one of those giant vein. hamster balls and have another gladiator in a hamster ball try to knock off my hamster ball that would be pretty fun yeah right yeah can we start that if the pen thing doesn't work out <laughs> yes sure sure it is. A, I'm gonna make sure the pen thing works out so that that <laughs> never comes to that diversification. <laughs> All right, uh, we're we doing Catherine, Adrian. Yeah. All right, Catherine asks, would you ever consider bringing back some of the old segments, like right now? Love the pencast, of course, but it was partially a COVID change. It wasn't. It wasn't. Um, even before COVID, uh, when we retired, right now, we didn't rec retire it because of COVID. Um, it happened pre-COVID. Mm. But we had been talking about, um, it was actually Brian's idea to do like a fountain pen weekly show. He, he originally envisioned something like fountain pen news sort of thing, like, you know, with the desk and the, you know, um, sort of deal. And then um, it was it was a vision before COVID. But when COVID happened, um, it messed everything up. It yeah. did, but it kind of prompted us to actually give it a shot. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes and no. Yeah, what well, it did, you know, COVID was a mm -hmm. catalyst. Yeah. But the plan was there before. Yeah, and part of that too was, you know, we've been on we've been on YouTube for 13 and a half years now. So we've seen a lot of things ebb and flow and change in the community and their algorithms and all this type of stuff. Um, and anybody who does any social media, anything, you hear about algorithms and you're kind of beholden to the algorithm monster. Um, and that's definitely true with us too. We don't totally like lean into that because we're not, you know, trying to be totally mainstream or anything. Um, and so most of our like dedicated, you know, hardcore pen content, we keep pretty solid, but 
you know, things like the Q&A and right now and the Pencast, they're a little looser format. They're a little more open. So we play around with that format a bit more. Uh, and that is it was kind of an evolution just with the changes that YouTube put out. You know, at the time that we started right now, YouTube was really pushing like daily vlog content. So anybody who is producing much more regular, shorter content, YouTube was serving that out to more people. So we were like, okay, well, let's try that. So we would literally shoot stuff on like a Tuesday or Thursday morning, edit it and publish it that afternoon. It was very nimble, very quick like that. But, you know, the preparation for that was like very aggressive. And it, you know, we did a bunch of them, but, you know, we started to have to dig deeper into the barrel for ideas. And it was, it was a kind of a grueling pace. And then keeping up with that, with everything else going on in the business. And then um, once YouTube started to sort of shift that, um, you know, that uh, uh, whatever uh, promotion or whatever they were doing for the daily stuff, the, the daily vlog started to go down and, you know, longer, less regular posted videos that were a little higher quality was what YouTube wanted to see more of. So it kind of was natural. We were sort of running out of steam and YouTube was not serving that up quite as much to everybody. So we thought it was natural to sunset that, you know, it was maybe, I forget when the last one we did, but it was six months before COVID or something like that. So it, it was kind of natural. Yeah, I feel like we ended at like 200. I remember we did one more right now post COVID. Like yeah. yeah, 201. So it, it just kind of like reached its natural conclusion and then yeah. it was an evolution. So, you know, Pencast, we're going to keep doing the same thing. I don't know. Well, maybe we'll be sitting here at a thousand episodes. Who knows? But it might be 142. I don't know because it all depends on what's going on in our life and what makes sense and which platforms you all want to see us on. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, it's an evolution. Yeah. Um, Adrian, we're doing not another pilot employee or not a, not a pilot employee. Okay. What's your favorite pen brand and why is it pilot? This is from, <laughs> this is from not a pilot employee. <laughs> I, Ike, I see you back there. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Um, pilot is amazing. Yes. Oh gosh. What's our, so our favorite non, what's your favorite non pilot? Oh, oh, that, that's actually a better question. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's hard to not talk about pilot a lot because like as, as, as a retailer, you know, it's the most, it's well, the most consistent brand out there, you know, yeah. from, 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 from the entry level to the super expensive one. And the it's range, the, the range yeah. is huge. You it's, know, you it's, can it's, start it's, and finish with pilot. At really. any point you're going to get a good pen. So I mean, it's hard not to recommend that as people who sell fountain pens, sure, you know? Sure. Um, but, uh, apart from that, I think that, uh, let's see. Hmm. That is a, that is a, that is an interesting one because I have different. I have different. I have different. Asking to pick your favorite. Well, I have. I have different favorites at different (laughs) at at different ranges and and points. Hmm. Um, Hmm. One thing that I uh, maybe is there like an underrated one I can mention. Golly, that's a tough one. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. God, I'm. Yeah, I've got like I've got like five that are kind of tight. Yeah, like I'm. I'm I'm pulling a brand. Like, well, it depends. Um. I do sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it depends. <laughs> Golly, let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, Lamy's pretty solid. You know, I do like that. Okay, yeah, obviously, Twisby's good. Sailor's good. These are all Visconti. You know, I, I like them all. I'm trying to think of like you know some of the ones that I have most recently purchased. I, you know, it's hard not to um, put Sailor there in the mix behind Pilot as well, mm-hmm. because you know I think that they they do a lot of what Pilot does just they don't have the range of consistency you know in in like the entry level area you mm-hmm, know they're still mm-hmm. kind of working on developing that a bit sure, sure. so man that that is a that is a tough one adrian you want to jump in here and what give give us a favorite <laughs> uh opus 88 really opus 88 opus 88, my opus. Opus 88. Yes. they've got like one pen <laughs> they have others <laughs> Uh, you're not wrong. Mm. You're not wrong. They do like I know they have more than one pen. I know, but they really the demonstrator, the big demonstrator. That that's the one that people you know they yeah. they, they they come for that pen. So yeah, they know what they, they they're doing that right. That's for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Uh, Catherine asked, "Did you find anything special at the DC 2023 show to buy?" Yes. Yes, we did. We bought one thing. <laughs> we, right? we one co- thing. <laughs> we collectively bought a uh, a shown pen with a monarch nib. Yeah. So um, we were very excited about that. You know, we knew we knew coming in that like we needed to leave yeah. with the Monarch nib. We talked. We, didn't, we talked about it ahead of time. Drew we was didn't. Like, we didn't Drew talk was like, about. Can I buy this with the company card? Yeah. And I was like, 
Yes, absolutely. That's we didn't awesome. talk about buying the fancy <laughs> rainbow one, but it just kind of happened. Yeah. You know, he came up to it like I had not yet. He didn't tell me not him. to get the rainbow one. I had not, like, <laughs> this is one of those like I trust Drew kind of things. Uh, but you know, he he bought the pen, and the first time I saw you, what is it, Saturday morning? Yeah, I hadn't yet connected with him. He comes in, he's like, here's the pen that you bought. <laughs> he showed it to me. And I was like, that looks amazing. Yeah. Good choice. So yeah, that's yep. the, that's really the one. I mean, it depends what you consider buy, like personal buy. But like, yeah, I've had no. a lot of communication with other potential speculative brands. And there's yeah. a lot of new things that are coming out from various you know suppliers that we already work with. So I, do, yeah. I don't know if technically you would consider that buying, but I've probably either started conversations or committed to potentially a lot of different things that yeah. I bought through the company that y'all would get to see. I so. did I did walk away with a um a, a Scribo pen. I don't I didn't uh previously own one of those. Um it's mm -hmm. just and it's a double extra fine. So Ooh, wow. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And it's a yeah. factory double extra fine too. Yeah. Yeah. So not a not a custom. Yeah. A lot of the uh a lot of the employees who formerly worked at Omos started Scribo. So Omos when it when bankrupt sort of broke apart you know, so like the the name got picked up by one company, and some of the equipment went somewhere else, and the employees and all the nib stuff went another place. So like most of the nib stuff and most of the employees who were working on the nibs and whatnot went and started Scribo. So it's sort of like somewhat of a, a f small phoenix out of out of Omos. Yeah, that, uh, is a Scribo. And we've been talking to them for a while, so that's you know a potential for us too. Yeah. Um, so we've only got a, if we wanted to end this thing at twelve, we've only got a couple more potential questions. If we want to okay. be brief, Brian. What is that? <laughs> yep. I don't know what that means. Eric okay. Vandenberg okay. asks, so what made you not run away from fountain pens when you hit the bad experiences? Hmm. Just the people or more? That's a beefy cue. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I hadn't really connected personally with a lot of people for me in the early days. So it was more of like the collective kind of like vibe and the enthusiasm that I saw in the community than it was because again I literally never had no anybody in my personal life that I knew that used fountain pens um, which is kind of different like most most people that I know they're like you know my my father had a fountain pen and gave it to me or my friend at work introduced me to it or whatever like it's a surprisingly large number of us that get into the hobby because of the enthusiasm of somebody we already have a personal connection with um, that wasn't my experience uh, but you know, so I, over time, as I got to know more people, that for sure was a huge motivator. For me personally, it was more of just that like determination of, I believe that there's something here that people need to be introduced to, you know, especially people like me. So it was less of like a specific individual who kept me through, you know, those times where it felt really hard. And it was more of like, I had kind of an, a vision in mind for what I wanted to see happen. And that's what, I mean, in the, the videos take so long to prepare. I wish you guys could see what it really takes. Um, you know, any video, especially in the early days, would take eight to 12 hours for me to prepare, even as bad as they were in the early days. That's how long it took because I had to learn the products. I had to double check all the information to make sure I knew what I was saying was right, playing around with different things and all that. It was just, it, and then the production, the editing, all that stuff. So it was a lot of just like that, that, that determination of like, I need to see this thing happen no matter how much work it takes so it was kind of just like that blind determination what did you like when you first got some nasty youtube comments like like personally attacking you what was like did you think about like well screw this i'm not dealing with this anymore um we get surprisingly few but like negative I, I, YouTube comments. I remember you know there there was some there's, early there's ones some. like when yeah but did, it was did, did that ever like legit fluster you or was that just like well i'll be irritated for 15 minutes and then move on i mean like anything else it doesn't make you feel good you know when people yeah. are just doing that but the thing that i always kept in mind was that for one everybody can get brave behind the keyboard you know when you talk to somebody face to face they're never going to say to your face the things that they would type like that. What if you were like, so I just, you know, I always kept that shorter, though. filter. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the size helps, right? Um, no, but, but I always was empathetic around people that left negative comments because I was just like, you don't really know me. You don't really know what's going on. Yeah. And I was also like, they still took the time and watched the thing. So it's like, <laughs> I got your you know? view. <laughs> and sort of from like a, you know, whatever creator and influencer standpoint, it's like, well, if you watch it and you leave a comment and you engage, <laughs> that still kind of helps me. You know what I mean? So it's like, the joke's I'm not on gonna, you, pal. I'm not gonna, yeah. 
I never, I never like took it as anything that personal because I always, again, I always had like the, the goal in mind of what I was trying to do was share the pen stuff. I mean, probably if I cared what people thought, I might have done more to make myself more presentable <laughs> and put my laundry away in the background and stuff like that. But I was like, I literally don't care. I need to make sure the pen knowledge is good and that my genuine enthusiasm comes across and everything else is kind of whatever, you know, it's got to be enough, a high enough production value to where it's not distractingly bad. But, you know, I tried to keep it pretty real. So ultimately that's what it was people would leave comments and be like oh i can see your pit stains and i'm like yep <laughs> you sure can next you know or how I would dare just, you or i would just not engage at all and how dare you not wear your pit diapers what i will say <laughs> that's right what i will say is really cool and y'all know because you're here in person or maybe you're watching on video and you see comments and stuff the pen community is very supportive and remarkably civil for the internet at large and that really translates to like the moderation that we have on our social channels too. Every now and then some like wider internet creeps in and it gets a little crazy. But for the most part, when people get in there and start throwing mud, all of y'all will jump in and like kind of crap on them and they're not welcome to like <laughs> say bad stuff about what's going on. So really it's kind of a collective effort that makes our life a lot easier. Um, so yeah, I really don't, I really don't sweat those comments at all. And I've, at this point I've heard basically all of it. So and like whatever, you yeah, know, I really don't even care. So yeah, cool. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we have a poll, right? Don't we have a poll? We've got a couple of polls, Adrian. Okay. But everybody can see those. Um, well, not in the not in the video, Drew. What? Oh, not in the video. Yeah. Okay. Everyone in real life. Well, we can screenshot those. How do we get we to them? Okay. All right. Well, if you want to mention the polls, uh, Adrian asked, what's one word that describes your fountain pen collection? And uh, the top word is eclectic. Many people mm -hmm. wrote that. Oh, the top word now is growing. Oh, yeah, you're right. It just popped in there. <laughs> growing and eclectic are pretty How well ironic. tied. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so there we go. That fits my collection too. Yeah, that's, <laughs> growing that's and fact. eclectic. That's yeah. Fact. Um, what about the shirt one? Did we ask about the? Uh, I don't know how to shirt? actually look at previous ones, mm, but okay. I'm sure that I won Bananas because. Won Dang it! Fifty-five percent bananas. I'm disappointed in all of you. Don't clap for Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Boo, bananas. <Yes>. Yes. <laughs> Get out of here. Drew like intentionally sought That's out the a bunch shirt. Of it was malarkey. very particular and I was at Target and I was like, yeah, this looks cool. Not pa I packed this one because <laughs> this one doesn't wrinkle. So yeah, I didn't enough. have to use that hotel iron. I will say you can't really tell if it's wrinkled because there's so much going on. So That's that right. I kind of dig, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. And then uh, fun fact, uh, apparently that beating people with a padded stick thing is called a boffing club. I don't know. And American gladiators, they call them pugil sticks. I don't know. But uh, we're just going to call them Q-tips. I learned things. In our, in our new things. fountain pen show that we're going to be doing. If yeah. the pen thing doesn't work out. The Richmond, yeah. the Richmond Fountain Pen Show, which is also some type of physical attack challenge. Well, little little fun fact here. So I don't know if we've talked about this too much before, but we were looking at, for our 10th anniversary, we were talking about doing a, like a pen event in Richmond. And don't get excited. We're not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're hitting we 40, were all very excited We're, we're hitting about 14 it. years this year, so we didn't do it. But um, we started talking about it. It was pretty exciting. We had a lot of vendors who were like, yeah, we'll totally come and do this whole thing. We, we had trouble finding time in our calendars to schedule the initial planning meeting. To talk about to it. To talk about what it would look like. And we're like, this is probably a sign that we can't take this on. So ultimately, we had a lot of personal stuff, me and Rachel, that happened. And I was like, it's really good that we didn't take that on. But... Adrian's over there, Who like knows? I'll do it, I'll do it. Can I do it? Who Can knows? I do it, please? <laughs> it would be, it would be a lot of fun, but it would be. I see how hard the folks work who plan shows, and you know all the retailers who run brick and mortar stores, and when they do events in person, I'm just like that is exhausting. So I don't know if we ever do it, it's a labor of love, but I, I have not been one to jump in to help. If you plan let me, if out. you let me have some American Gladiator challenges, I think that <laughs> we can work something out. We'll see. We'll see. If that ever happens, you'll know that Drew was more involved in the planning. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. I think that's good. We were right around an hour. So for those of you watching in video form, I hope this all looks okay. Do you have a random fun okay. fact? I didn't prepare. Oh, we have a fun we fact. We have a fun fact. All right, cool. We'll, we'll crowdsource it. 
Okay, I see a question. Okay, fun fact from Natalie. Thank you, Natalie. Um, for the shirts they're wearing today, the first time Brian wore the banana shirt was Pencast 85, and Drew's Trapper Keeper shirt was 86. There you go. Neither of those are 84. No, no. Maybe inspired from 84, though. Yeah. Well, 85 gives some credit, because I'm sure that Back to the Future and Goonies were... Filmed in 84. Cool stuff going on. Yeah. So yeah. Drew funny. and I were born in 1984. That's why we have such an affinity for it. That it just happens to be the best year ever. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you all for watching. Um, we're going to keep the pencast thing going. I don't know. We don't have any plans to shut it down. Maybe by episode 200, it'll be five and a half hours long every week. <laughs> it just keeps creeping up. You know, it was an, it was an hour and a half when Adrian and I did it, right? I don't. I don't doubt it. Yeah, I don't okay. doubt it. Okay, maybe just, this just, one will be the record like shortest one we've ever done. I don't know. since episode I don't know. one. I think yeah, that one was we short. we started off like let's just do these for an we hour. We're like forty five minutes to an hour. That was the original target. Yeah, and the record's like two and a half hours. Whatever. Anyway, uh, that's all we got for this week. Thank you all for watching slash watching and being here. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one and right on. <laughs> <laughs>